Hi, today we are going to demonstrate EUS and ERCP in a patient with chronic pancreatitis and pancreas division. This patient is having pain abdomen recurrent episode for last three years. So we are going to perform EUS in this patient. In this patient, we will focus on imaging of pancreatic duct. We will explain a simple method to focus directly on the pancreas. First, we enter inside the stomach our scope is in proximal stomach so on the left side if you see the endoscopic image on the left side is the greater curve on the right side is the lesser curve anteriorly is anterior wall posteriorly is the posterior wall of stomach pancreas lies close to that angle and we know that pancreas is posterior to posterior gastric wall so near that angle if we rotate scope clockwise through the posterior gastric wall, we can see the pancreas. Here we can see pancreas with dilated duct. So we want to rule out any obstructing lesion like stone, stricture, or mass inside the pancreatic duct. This central anechoic structure is pancreatic duct. We can see our arrow is on the pancreatic duct here we can appreciate that pancreatic duct is falling down it indicates that we are close to junction of neck and head of pancreas from this location if we take a clockwise sweep by our left hand we can go towards pancreatic body and tail here we can see pancreatic duct is dilated left kidney indicate junction of pancreatic body and pancreatic tail if we rotate scope further clockwise we can see pancreatic tail region below pancreatic tail we can see spleen pancreatic duct is not much dilated in tail region it's dilated more in neck region and body region in this patient next is evaluation of pancreatic head for that we have to go in first part of duodenum from antrum we can see gallbladder is distended in this patient so we have to rule out biliary obstruction in this patient so we go across the pylorus into first part of duodenum that's pyloric ring we go along the upper lip of pyloric ring and enter inside the first part of duodenum sometime in patient with chronic pancreatitis duodenum is deformed and it's a tricky to enter duodenum here we can see duodenal lumen so we go to junction of first and second part of duodenum and use the up knob to oppose the probe with the duodenal wall from here we can see a dilated structure that is portal vein we can see flow inside the portal vein and we can see any quick structure near the probe that's a bile duct if we rotate scope clockwise from this position we will go towards lower part of bile duct and we can see pancreatic head part of pancreatic head is seen here and we can see another anechoic structure which is rising in pancreatic head this anechoic structure is pancreatic duct we can see our green arrow over the pancreatic duct and we can see here pancreatic duct is going vertically up next we enter inside second part of duodenum we go close to papilla and suck all the air and fluid inside the duodenal human then we use the up knob to touch the probe with the duodenal mucosa after that first rotate scope anti-clockwise then give a clockwise torque with the clockwise torque we can see two large vessels one vessel is close to probe other is slightly away from the probe the vessel which is close to probe is ivc and from ivc if we rotate scope clockwise we can see iota so here we can see ivc and iota 
IVC is in upper part and IOTA is in lower part of screen. From IOTA, if we pull back scope slightly 5 to 10 mm and rotate scope clockwise, we can see part of pancreas. Here we can see pancreatic uncinate process. So we can see part of pancreas with anechoic structure inside. So we will study these structures in detail one by one. Here our scope has fallen back inside stomach. Sometimes it's difficult to keep scope in second part of duodenum. So we will go again in second part of duodenum. From junction of first and second part, we pull back. That will take us towards second part of duodenum. Again, we can see a vessel. This is iota. From iota, if we rotate scope clockwise, we can see pancreatic head. Now, close to probe, we can see a anechoic structure, which is horizontal, likely to be bile duct. If we rotate scope clockwise from bile duct, we should see another duct that is pancreatic duct. So here we can see a dilated pancreatic duct and we had a very good finding here that we will discuss in detail. Here we can see bile duct. Here we see an anechoic structure running parallel to probe. This structure is bile duct. So once we rotate scope, Clockwise from bile duct, we should see pancreatic duct. In this patient, when we are rotating clockwise, we don't see any ductal structure. Further clockwise torque, now we can see there is some ductal structure. So we can see union of two ducts. One duct is duct of uncinate from left side, which is joining with the main pancreatic duct on the right side, and they are forming a larger duct and which is ascending vertically and opening at the minor papilla. So the main duct is not opening at major papilla, it's opening proximal to major papilla at minor papilla. Again, this is bile duct opening at major papilla. If I rotate scope clockwise, we don't see any ductal structure. Further clockwise, we can see now two ductal structures which are joining forming a larger duct and it's passing through the minor papilla again we can see union of two ducts which is rising vertically please see this area carefully again bile duct and rotate clockwise no duct further clockwise union of two ducts forming a larger duct which is ascending vertically and going through the minor papilla and we can see even the duct close to minor papilla is dilated so this suggests this patient has likely pancreas division as main duct is opening separately at minor papilla now the next step is to trace the duct opening at minor papilla to pancreatic body and tail here we can see this duct is horizontal duct and it's a close to probe so that anechoic structure close to probe is common bile duct from common bile duct when we rotate scope clockwise we see another anechoic structure again we see union of duct of uncinate and the another pancreatic duct which is forming a duct which is opening at the minor papilla. To confirm the diagnosis of pancreatic division, we have to trace the duct opening at minor papilla towards pancreatic body and tail region. So here we can see it's a pancreatic duct which is opening at minor papilla so to trace this duct towards pancreatic body and tail we have to give a clockwise torque and gently pull out the scope here we can see duct is dilated and there is 
sludge and stone inside the duct. When we rotate scope clockwise, we can see linear vascular structures which are SMD and SMA indicating that we have reached pancreatic body. Here we can see SMB clockwise torque, we can see SMA and duct is dilated in pancreatic body region. If we rotate further, we can see that we are going towards pancreatic tail region that's the spleen indicating that we have reached up to pancreatic tail region. So we have traced the duct from minor ampulla to the pancreatic tail which confirms diagnosis of pancreas division. Next video we will demonstrate how to do endotherapy of pancreas division. Endotherapy for pancreas division is performed in long loop. First we cross the pylorus and go to first part of duodenum. Trick to focus the minor papilla is to first focus the major papilla. Here we can see major papilla. So once we see major papilla, we should push scope inside. When we push scope inside, minor papilla will be on proximal and right side of major papilla. On fluoroscopy, we can see our scope is in long position. So this is the position to cannulate minor papilla. While cannulating the minor papilla, one should try to get end face position for opening of minor papilla. Here we can see opening is in the central part of papilla and is stenotic. So we will be using guide wire and ultra taper cannula to cannulate the pancreatic duct. Ultra taper cannula has a tip of three French which can enter the stenotic opening. We have given glucagon here to relax the duodenum. So first we should try to get a very stable position. So this appears to be opening of pancreatic duct in central part of the ampulla. So we will do a guide wire cannulation here. So the guide wire should be 2 to 3 centimeter outside the cannula. So we can see here wire is coming out of the cannula. Now with the guide wire will go inside. Guide wire has gone inside. Over the guide wire we can push our cannula. On fluoroscopy, we can see that wire has gone deep inside the pancreatic duct. It is crossing the spine and reaching the tail region. Now, the next step is changing the accessory. With ultra taper cannula, we cannot inject contrast. So, we'll remove the ultra taper cannula and exchange it for syntotome with which we can inject contrast and do the syntotomy. You can see whitish fluid with some chalky material coming out of the duct. We can see minor papilla is prominent and major papilla is distal and on left side of minor papilla. So we could appreciate that Cannulating with the guide wire tip and using the ultra taper cannula can be helpful in cannulating the minor papilla. Now, next step is passing the stentotome over the guide wire. On fluoroscopy, we can see that our scope is in long loop. Now we are passing the syntotome over the guide wire. So there may be some challenge in passing syntotome inside the minor papilla. The trick here is we engage the tip of papillotome, then use up knob and slightly anti clockwise torque by rotating towards left side and slightly pulling the scope back and we can see that 
we have entered inside the minor papilla and pancreatic duct. On pancreatogram, we can see that duct is dilated in head, neck, and body region, and the slight narrowing of the duct in pancreatic head region. Next step is performing minor papilla sphincterotomy. For that, we have to stretch the cutting wire of sphincterotome and cut the minor papilla muscle. You can appreciate that in this patient, we are not able to stretch the cutting wire of sphincterotome and we are not getting desired amount of cut with this sphincterotome. So we will exchange this sphincterotome and use the other one. So we are removing the sphincterotome here and we can see that flow of pancreatic juice with the white flaky material. In this patient, we performed endoscopic ultrasound prior to ERCP. Endoscopic ultrasound showed pancreas division. You can see our other video where we have demonstrated how to diagnose pancreas division with linear echoendoscopy. With the linear echoendoscopy, once the scope is in second part of duodenum, we can diagnose pancreas division. Here we can appreciate that now our scope is in short position. And now we are passing the sphincterotome over the guide wire. Now the sphincterotome has gone inside and we will stretch the cutting wire. Now it's working well. So with the minor adjustment with and left knob, we should try to get desired direction. Now we are cutting step by step, cutting small amount of tissue at each time. We are using endo cut for sphincterotomy in this patient. Purpose of doing endotherapy in a patient with chronic pancreatitis are treating stricture, removing stone from main pancreatic duct and doing sphincterotomy to reduce the pressure inside the duct. This patient has small stone in pancreatic duct with slight narrowing in the pancreatic head region. So here we are treating both stricture and the stone. For removing stone we can use either balloon or basket. When we use the balloon, the stone can impact inside the side branches. Problem with the basket is that when the duct is not dilated, it's difficult to pass the basket inside the pancreatic duct. And sometimes in the gesture, basket can get impacted inside the pancreatic duct. Here we can see that stone are visible at the papilla and in the pancreatic duct. So here we can use the balloon to pull the stone outside the papilla and pancreatic duct. So here you can see that we are passing the balloon inside the pancreatic duct. So we will pass a small balloon just above the stone, inflate the balloon and then pull back the balloon and we can see that two small stones have come out. Sometimes the pancreatic stone can be speculated and that can lead to rupture of balloon. So once we apply extra pressure that can lead to rupture of balloon. So we will pass balloon again inside the duct 
and try to remove if there are other stones left inside the duct. So we're passing balloon inside duct. Balloon is in now in pancreatic head region. We will inflate the balloon and pull it back. So when we're pulling the balloon, we should slightly rotate clockwise and this will take the balloon outside the papilla. By clockwise torque, I mean slightly on the right side, right rotation of the scope. So the next step is placing a stand inside the duct. Size of the stand will depend on the diameter of the pancreatic duct. So in this patient, pancreatic duct is slightly narrowed in pancreatic head region. And so we will place a 7 French 9 cm single pictal stand in this patient. Single pictal stand will prevent the migration of stand inside the pancreatic duct. If pancreatic stand moves inside the or migrate inside the pancreatic duct, sometimes it becomes challenging to remove the pancreatic stand and we may have to use pancreatoscopy to remove the pancreatic stand. So here we are placing a 7 French stent. So when we are pushing the stent inside, if we rotate the scope counterclockwise and by using the up knob, we can go inside the pancreatic duct. So here we can see that we are pushing the stent inside the pancreatic duct. Now the stent has reached up to the junction of body and neck. Now we will make a loop inside the duodenal tumor. So here we can see that slightly longer part of stent is inside the duodenal lumen. So we could have used 7 French, 7 centimeter stent also. But I think it's a pigtail stent. Uh, so there should not be any problem of duodenal injury. Sometimes if we use a straight stent and keep longer part inside the duodenal lumen, it can perforate through the opposite wall of duodenum and it can lead to peritonitis. Now, when we are removing the scope, we have to be very careful. So there can be a lot of secretion, a lot of fluid inside the stomach that has to be aspirated. As the patient is anesthetized, this can lead to aspiration of fluid. So very carefully, we remove all the fluid from stomach and duodenum. Thanks for watching this video.